if we are able to do that, mm. then the subsequent generations of Singaporeans will become a lot more empathetic. Hi, I'm Hosan Leong and welcome to another episode of Red Dot Hot Takes. With me are three very special guests and I want to introduce them to you. First up, we have Benjamin Lee, aka Mr. Miyagi. He is a blogger and veteran in the creative media industry. Introduce yourself, Ben. Yes, I'm Ben, as Hosan said. And one of my day jobs is actually as Director for Creative and Content Strategy at, a, at an ad agency, Distinct. And I've also been writing online, on and offline actually. Uh, nice comedy. Things, huh? Oh, comedy, okay. Comedy. <laughs> nice things as well. Uh, sometimes not so nice things also. Lah. I think you've seen it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for the last 20 years, actually, a wow. social commentary on, on all things that matter to Singapore as mm. well. Thank you. Yeah. And um, with us, we also have Liana Musfira, who is the CEO and founder of the Hayaa Network. Um, right. Maybe tell us a bit about more yourself. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I'm more known as Ustaza Dena Musfira, a um, religious teacher. I conduct a lot of seminars mm. and feel, feel good, good yes. motivational uh, talk. I meet people every day. I also want the most influential mm. women of 2019. Yeah, what was that about? I have no that? idea. I don't know. Somebody nominated me. Uh -uh. People voted and I won. Very good. I, I wrote two books recently. Mm. Just um, launched my second book. It's called Dear Broken Soul. So it's all about the helping people being the mm. empowerer. You nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, to meet you too. And we have Minister Maliki here who is going to be talking to us and giving us some advice perhaps and sharing your views on the pillars of the Forward SG exercise. We have got six pillars, right? Do you all know what it is? What they are? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we've been doing this. Come on, we know. Come. Uh, First one. <clears throat> Unite. Unite. Second one. Empower. Empower. Care. Care. Steward. And? HDB, HDB. Build. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah. And the last one is to equip ourselves um, so we can move on. All right. Let's just start right now about the pillar unite because we always talk about national identity. Um, so maybe Minister Malik can start us off about yeah. this whole big identity thing about being Singaporean. The Unite is really to bring people together. So in the Ford SG uh, exercise on understanding the Unite pillar, we want to see how do Singaporeans view the future of Singapore? Mm. What kind of what we call social compact? What as a society, we all need to do our part. Because sometimes when we talk about social compact, oh, what the government can do, do what Singapore can mm. do, right? Mm. But what Singaporeans can do amongst ourselves too, mm. uh, in order to build that sense of unity mm. because mm. the future is one that's likely to be so different from mm. what we are used to today. Mm. So in that Unite Pillar, we are looking at three different broad areas. One is really aspects of what we call, that, that says belonging, Mm -hmm. How do we make Singaporeans feel, feel that they belong to this place? More than just a physical space. Mm. More than just a space that you live mm. in, but space that you feel like this is really mine. Mm. You know, second one, we talk about bond. Bonding people together. And that's more than just CIMO. So looking at mm. new areas like special needs, elderly issues. How mm. do you bond people such that people feel that this is really the place that we can come together? The last one is really to build this future looking lah. How do you build a country? How do you build a space that's more just physical but emotional that connects, that connects everyone. everyone? And everyone feels like, yes, I am a Singaporean because I am part of this whole process mm. of building a new Singapore. New Singapore, not because it has to be different from what it is today. A new Singapore because I was part of it. Right. And that's right. really what we want to do in a unite pillar for as you exercise. So Ben, what, what are your thoughts on, 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 on is Singapore truly home for you? I think there's something, of course, we need to work on a lot. Mm. And a fun fact is that I didn't become Singaporean until I was 10. I was actually stateless, one of the rare stateless people. Oh dear. <laughs> so at age 10, when they said I had to swear my allegiance to the country and everything, at 10 years old, they had to old. figure out what it meant to me. Yeah, sure. And from, I think from then until I'm going to reveal my age already in the last. <laughs> No, don't. Then, Sorry, they'll, <laughs> then they'll know mine too. Yeah, It's okay, we're in the same series. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's been a long road already, I right? Yeah. Even, yeah. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though we are still a new country. Mm. But this forging of national identity is this ongoing process. Yes. Uh, what it is, what we are right now is still in flux. Yeah, and we yeah. need to figure out that it's moving, it's flowing in the right yeah. direction before mm. it hardens. Mm. Okay. But then we didn't talk so much about it like we were growing up, right? I mean, now we become no, more yeah. conscious. No, yeah. We never, right? we never we didn't spoke about identity no. in that sense. I think right now it's difficult for us to come up with a list of like, how do we identify ourselves as Singaporeans? Mm. But if we look out a little bit further, 
if we ask our friends from all over the world if mm. they know who a Singaporean is, they would have a more, I wouldn't say accurate, they would know how to describe us even better than how we know how to describe ourselves. Really? So I have a few friends from all over the world and they would come up with all these different nationalities. So are you from Malaysia? Are you from Thailand? Mm-hmm. Are you from Brunei? I said, no, I'm from Singapore. And I automatically see like their eyes like have, you know, those flying, you know, like those movie where you fall and then got stars the coming stars out. Now, uh. They were like so excited to know that I'm a Singaporean. Oh. So I said, what, what, what do way? you know yeah. about me as a Singapore? Oh, we heard <coughs> how clean it is. And you guys are always like efficient. <laughs> Uh, even, even the word robot comes out. Uh, like yes. you guys are robotic. <laughs> I, I hope that's a good thing. Like robot, very efficient. Everything so clean. <laughs> so it seems that. like they have a better description about who we are than we ourselves. But then that's their perception. That's correct. True, right? It's correct. their perception of what what Singaporeans are, and that correct. worries me. Yeah. Because we, I, I, before I answer yeah. what I am as uh-huh. a Singaporean, they are already filling up the gaps for me. Yeah. So it's like yeah. exactly. But you know, it's time to go into our first hot take, and it's okay. This is it. Singapore is so diverse that we will never have our own identity. What do y'all think? And I, I, I'll start off by saying the thing about the, the whole CMIO thing. Because mm. I know back in the day, we needed to have that. But now when people ask me who I am, what I am, I say I'm Singaporean. Right. I never say I'm Chinese Mm-mm. because I'm not from China. Mm. And to me, that I think unites us because why? Why do I need to tell you that, oh, I'm a Chinese Singaporean. No need what? I'm think, Singaporean. Uh, yeah, I think that's where you and I differ, <coughs> even though we are best friends. Uh, <laughs> I, I think there is value in our diversity mm-hmm. and our plur- plurality. I think there is no such thing as a singular Singaporean identity. Mm-hmm. And the more we try to forge one, the easier it is for us to dismantle it. I feel. I think what is strong is our, all our individual roots, mm. where we come from, and the ability of Singapore, the geographical location, yes. to actually let us plant our roots and create something new. Mm. So instead of our backgrounds, like say, for instance, yes, correct, we are not from China, we are not from India, we're not from Malaya, we are we set roots in Singapore, yep. it allows us to grow new plants. That's right. that's my thing. Okay. Uh, analogy of actually putting it. Yep, yep. So I think that it's very important for us to remember our roots, but also to remember that mm. these let us blossom or bloom yeah. where we mm. are and create mm. something new. I agree with with Ben mm. that this whole idea about the Singaporean identity, I think our diversity in itself is our de- identity, you mm. know, that we celebrate that mm. diversity and each community, we're just talking about CIMO first, mm. right? Okay. Each, each, each community brings to itself unique uh, value proposition, mm. uh, values, for example. Yep. We talk about language, right? Yep. Now, this is where I always like to show off my Chinese skill. Huh? <laughs> so, so I love Chinese language because it's got wonderful idioms that you can mm. never get in, in, in English. Sure. So for example, one, one favorite idiom of mine is Yuan Qing, Puru Qingling. Wow. Okay. Do you remember? I have no, no idea. Wow. No idea. What what what? I know you just know, said. Huh? Let me explain to you. Oh, that know, sounds so like, nice. Word, right? <laughs> it means the near neighbor is better than the distant relative. Ah. Now like you cannot get in English idioms. Okay, yeah. But that's a unique value of our yes. local society. We talk about the kampung spirit. Mm. The neighbor is the nearest support for you. Mm. Your relatives can live far away, but if there's a fire, there's an emergency, your neighbor is the first to come to you. Mm, mm. I don't get that in the Malay idiom. Mm-hmm. I don't get that mm-hmm. in English uh, sayings. Likewise, now I'm going to throw something back at wow, you. Wow. Uh, we uh, have remember a few years ago, we had a QB ad, right? Oh, I need to take a You don't get the English version. Exactly. So that diversity brings that identity to us because we learn values through all this one wonderful mm. sayings mm-hmm. and, and it's easier to teach children mm-hmm. the meaning behind important values, right. how important mm-hmm. family is, yeah. how important neighbor uh, relations, neighborly relations is. You know, so so I think that in itself to me is is our unique identity. Mm. And and we shouldn't see diversity as a challenge. Yeah. We should see it as an asset. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Celebrating our diversity, our differences yeah. even. Yes. Um, Liana, what are your thoughts? I think this question is uh, very offensive. Eh. Like, eh, eh, do you even have your own identity? Uh-uh. So I agree totally with what Ben and Minister are saying that we are this colourful, we are this mm. unique and other countries know us as that. Mm-hmm. So it is an asset, it's a blessing actually because we if we actually complement each mm-hmm. other. 
Yeah, so I don't know why, but the first word that came to mind was like, it's very offensive. Eh? We have identity. How can you mm. say we don't have? Yes, and what makes us unique as well, I think is, for example, Singlish. Yeah, um, that's when I, you see Singaporeans I'm, overseas. I'm, exactly, yes. that's yeah. how Absolutely. we know that. It's oh, a familiar, yeah. it's familiar, like, right? so yeah. happy when you hear someone speak English. <laughs> like, hey, hello, family. Like, which part of Singapore you're from? <laughs> like, like, it connects like, us, like, it connects <laughs> us. But, but I try to tell you, uh, yeah. from, from my, my work at MFA, I mm. travel a lot mm. and we have a lot of visitors. Many countries out there, they always see us as the beacon of success. I, I mean, I, I feel proud mm -hmm. when they say that, but I think that's one of the things that well, we don't quite realise. Then I got my ambassador friends who tell me when I ask them, how, how old are your kids? They say, oh, 15, daughter, 13. Mm. 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 But you know, Singapore, I don't have to worry, you know. Mm. My daughter can come back at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I yeah. am not worried. Safety. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We take it for granted. But this we is do. uniquely yeah. us. You know, we need us that, take it for granted, I don't know. Maybe because we, mm. we have had it for a long time. Right. Mm. You know, but always be humble. Uh, I always tell them that, you know, we, we have a lot to share with you, but we also have a lot to learn from you. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad we had this conversation about, about our identity, um, what, what, what we can show the world um, who we are yes. and how, how yeah. you know, we can stand on our own two feet and say we are Singaporean and be proud of it. But, but I wonder if we can also have the conversation on where we talk about uniting Singaporeans, looking at the diversity from the perspective of humanity too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the concerns I've had of, of late, I've been seeing quite a bit in the community, is really how we respond, for example, to people with special needs, mm. right? So I, I, I struggle because um, of late, I've, I've met families with children with um, autistic uh, spectrum disorder. You know, I'll give you an example of one story. I, I feel very worried about this case. Um, family, parents are in the 40s, the eldest son uh, it's, it's in um, K2, okay. Second son, when I met him, he's this big bubbly boy, but he just jumps and jumps and shouts. He doesn't speak. Mm. Then we were told that he's got ASD. Then the third boy, four boys. The third boy also just jumping around, screaming around, and older also diagnosed as ASD. Mm. And the parents tell me that the fourth child likely to be diagnosed with ASD, oh, wow. right? I said, what's your concern? How can I help you? I said, if you can help my neighbors understand my situation, because oh. every time there's a knock on the door, it's a policeman. A policeman who says somebody has just complained that there's so much noise in the house. Oh gosh. Aww. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it breaks my heart to hear that. What can we do as a community? Mm -hmm. and, and we're beginning to see children being diagnosed with early mm -hmm. developmental disorders, mm -hmm. not because they want it, but I don't know whether Singaporeans are aware. And, and they become mm. a little bit less, less tolerant because mm. of the fast-paced society that we are. I mean, this is one example. Yeah. You know, how uniting Singaporeans together mm. is really looking at the diversity in different aspects mm. and the aspect of humanity. Humanity. That must come out. And empathy. And, and empathy. How, and, and that must yeah. be what and who we are. Exactly. A people with a heart, with mm. a soul. Mm. that kind of like respects its individual. Can this be taught though, you think? Or, you know, how, how do I we... I think it can be taught through behaviours. So I told, the, I told the family, can I help you? The first thing I help them with is, can I carpet your flooring? Mm. Oh. So that less noise, mm. even when your child jumps yeah, around. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Then I said, I told the neighbours, I told my, my community leaders, can we talk to the neighbours downstairs? Can we find solutions together? This is really coming together, mm. the social compact. Mm -hmm. Not easy, but Not easy. this is really what Singapore is. If we are able to do that, mm. then the subsequent generations of Singaporeans will become a lot more empathetic. Yeah. Appreciating differences, mm. but acknowledging strengths too. Because children with ASD have got other strengths. Yes. And we need to look for those strengths. Mm. We need to find that everyone has yeah. a role to play in our society. Wonderful. Yeah. It's about um, making sure the community understands yeah. and, and, and what they can do to help. I think we, it's good that we have come to a point in, in, in this 50 over years of Singapore, mm. Singapore um, to have even differently able athletes who have done Singapore proud on the, on the world stage yes. uh, in swimming, in, in, in so many archery, in so many things. Um, and I think it's good that we're starting to embrace everybody and and I think and, and celebrate and celebrate, strengths. celebrate them. Yes, strengths and talents. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. But I think though sometimes, sometimes people see us, our Singaporeans think that you're not a success until 
you've made it overseas, which is our next hot take. <laughs> Singaporeans don't show enough appreciation to lower towards local talents. No, for example, for example, okay, to be, to, you know, JJ Lin had to leave Singapore to go make it big. What do you think, Ben? I have very strong views on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think- I, Let's hear it. Yes. Yeah, I think we are world-class and not enough of us know that we are world-class and right. are proud of it. And I yeah. think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we, we started listening to what others said about us mm. and wore that little red dot moniker a mm. little too seriously. Yeah, right, right. I don't yeah. think we should call belittling ourselves, ourselves like, belittling uh, ourselves yeah. and always saying, oh, we're punching above our weight. When yeah. the truth is, we're not a little red dot. We yeah. are really very powerful and strong in terms of our talent base. Mm. You don't see it as part of humility mm. or modesty. Yeah. There, there's, a <laughs> there's, nuance, a <laughs> there's a nuance, but it, it, you need to be confident. Asian, la, Asian. Yeah. La. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> confident. I think uh, it's holding us back. I, I, I agree, I agree. Mm. And I think that then more needs to be done to actually say, hey, we are world class. Remember yeah. there was one time when we got a little bit offended when somebody not naming the group that said, hey, you guys should go and see the backstage because mm. they have world-class yeah. production yeah. crew yeah. who do quick change so fast, like in three minutes can mm. change costume. Then I'm like, hello, Jose Leong can change costume in 30 seconds. Wow, that's better. Remember that? <laughs> Our yes. backstage crew are world-class. But anyway, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Then, then, you know, Little Red Dot, but does New York call themselves the small apple? <laughs> no, right. Yeah, no. They are the big apple daring mm. you to take a bite of it if you, if you true, dare. True, true, true. So, so humility, not good lah. Not, I mean, maybe to a certain extent. To a certain extent, extent, yeah. extent yeah. but I think we should. Be more look, confident. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What, what do you think? I mean, for, for, for example, you know, even our Malay talents. Mm, mm. I think uh, be, be, because <laughs> you, you give us a platform. Look at Asian Idol. Singaporean wins, wins how many times? Uh, Singaporean uh, Asian Idol. Mm. Like there are other countries, right? That are competing. Mm. But the kind of like cheerleading that Singaporeans give like who won? Hadi Mirza won. No, Hadi Mirza uh, won. Ali Vaziz won. Uh, uh. But I mean, it's but it's true because a lot of I guess maybe because our market, our pool and our market is so small. Yeah. Mm, and right. if you want to, to grow and spread your wings, you have to go overseas, I guess. Yeah. And for the Chinese artists, they all go to China. And yeah. for the Malay artists, they all go to Malaysia. No, but that, I think that's part of the reality. Like, yeah, that's I mean, I, I I I I I agree with with Ben's point about us uh, being more confident, self-confident mm. of ourselves. Um, I think part is the market. Economies of scale, people coming yeah. to watch because we're just very small. And I think artists do do go out because they really do want to have the market out mm. there. But that doesn't mean that we as Singapore shouldn't be mm. recognizing them first. Yes. Uh, if we're able to recognize the talent, then we should actually uh, the, um, celebrate that talent. Yeah. I, I think we, we should. Uh, allow ourselves the knowledge that we are good enough to compete on the world stage. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. wonderful because Anjana won Best Supporting Actress in the BAFTAs for her supporting role in yes, Tennessee heard, Williams. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, the yes. play, uh, Deidre Koo in, in Australia has just got her the leading role in Rocky Horror Show mm. as Janet. So I'm very proud of this, this next generation of Singaporeans. It's like, I'm like, those were my dreams when I was, you know, younger. <laughs> but I'm so proud of them. So, you know, it's true that the Singaporeans are world-class right. in their talent. Look at sports. Mm. Look at your son. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, cheap plug. Um, uh, my, it's my not son. a cheap plug. Uh, he's the <laughs> <laughs> indoor skydiver. Indoor skydiver. So he's part of the uh, six person Singapore wow. team wow. that competes around the world and wow. they are world class. Excellent. Gold uh, medalist. World Cup Kai, champion. Yeah, yeah, Kira yeah. Po and all that. that yeah. yeah. So the uh, open world champion is Kira Po and mm. the mm. junior world champion is, mm. is my son and that's right. been it's, it's amazing. Five of them going to compete, beating mm. everybody else who mm. come from much bigger countries mm. with correct, a larger correct. pool of yeah. right. athletes. Mm. And, and it's, it's really, I, what I'm really thrilled about is that these kids have no inferiority complex. They right. go there, they know, okay, I have to compete. And they know they're good enough at that stage. And mm -hmm. that's the kind of attitude that we want to instill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then it's it's great, especially recently the SEA Games as well. Um, our, our swimmers swept right. all the gold. Um, my niece won gold, so I just have to be very proud to say. Who's your niece? <laughs> um, Faith Cool. She, okay. she won the relay. Congratulations. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and you know, recently I, I went to a para games uh, in uh, swimming, right? Mm. It's a world championship. It held in Singapore. Mm, yeah. I tell you, very few people are aware of it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. How, how are we going to get, how come people don't know about it? Uh? Is it, is it, 
why is it? Because the space is very noisy and there's so much things going on and... and Probably a, a combination of everything. Yeah. But yeah. I think if we made the effort to be part of our communities, mm. like for example, I think uh, one of the more successful local football clubs is uh, Haokang United. Mm. They have a lot of home support and all mm. that. If every, every other neighborhood supported their neighborhood teams, I think we're on to something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Earlier on, Liana, you were speaking about the kampong spirit. And so that brings us to our next hot take, which is about Singaporeans not caring about helping others nowadays. Mm. Um, even about, we're talking about how empathy and all that. Um, because when I was growing up, I think a lot of us in HDB, you know, and we were after school, we would play with our neighbors. Our doors were always open. People would come around and go, hey, I got quick quick for you. Hey, I baked this for you. That doesn't seem to be happening nowadays. What, why do you think, Liana? Okay, they, yeah, yeah. we've got too much on the plate already. <laughs> but it's not that we don't want, we want, but we wish we have more time than 24 hours. I think we help. We do help, but it's usually at the very last minute. So, for example, if you look at Instagram or face, uh, Facebook alone, they would ha be accounts that will be sharing um, a, a, a request to help for donation. Oh, okay. If, let's say, a house got burned or a family mm -hmm. you know, lost the house or something. And then you will see the community or the influencers or mm -hmm. everyone's um, using social media to like, you know what, any amount is doable, any amount is needed. But it's sad because it's usually at the very last minute mm -hmm. that should be initiated mm -hmm. even before anything so bad you, happens. So you see it, you realise it and you just volunteer exactly. to Why help. do we have to wait until it's so bad mm. and then we will come in and offer our help. Mm. I think it's some, something got to do with timing and like what makes you wait. But do you think yeah. Singaporeans have become more self-centered, Minister? I, I don't think the issue is self-centeredness but mm. I think the issue is really sometimes they, they may not be aware of what's happening mm. around them because mm. they are, they've got so many other competing demands. Uh, to say self-centeredness implies that you don't really care don't about care. other people. But I, I think they do care uh, if they are aware. Mm. Uh, but I think the challenge is really to make them aware that mm. there are issues in the community. And that's really where the community has to start connecting with each other. You mm. know, um, uh, getting to know your neighbours, for example, getting to know the issues that your neighbours are facing, chatting with your neighbours, finding mm. time to chat with your neighbours. Mm. Right? So you go into a, a, a lift, or you go into a lift and you see an elderly going to the lift with you. The first thing you'll just ask, auntie, mm. how many, how many mm. which floor, right? Seven floor, just press the seven floor. Help the auntie a little mm. bit, right? Then you get to know that person. But that sense of, of wanting to know another person doesn't come as naturally no. as I hope it would be. Not for us. I, I think in Singapore, it's a bit funny that way. It, you know, because like recently, I, I just came back from, from, from France. And everybody says bonjour to you. you do you know me? What do you want? You know, uh, and it's, it's interesting because it, maybe we could inculcate that into. That's our, we it's try. lovely. Yeah, it's try. so it's nice to say hello to someone and smile at them. Yeah, yeah. I do you that know? all the time. Uh. Then, yeah. but, then people, uh, <laughs> but, but that's this is wonderful. If they don't say hi back to you, then they don't know yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's <laughs> yeah, right. Ben is uh, because we, like, you studied like, abroad I, as well. Yeah, I, I was in Australia mm. for eight years, so it's an Australian habit to to say hi to you, no matter what. Yeah, no matter what how's it going and a lot of people uh, Singaporeans are criticizing oh they don't mean it they're just saying it for you know out of habit but out of this habit right mm. comes the opportunity to if somebody actually needs to talk yes. they might connect correct, correct. so I, I've actually taken the the made the habit of if I'm in a grab or anything mm. I know driving a grab is Get very lonely person, right? mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah and if there's an indication that the yeah. driver wants to talk or yeah. have a conversation, I will make conversation. Yeah. And it's fascinating. Absolutely. The opening, then the ride seems short it, it, for both of us. And mm. I think that's it, um, actually very, very useful. Sure. Sometimes you get an insight into how, okay, what difficulties this guy yeah. is, mm. is facing mm -hmm. and all that. And you feel, you start to feel for that person. Can my my sense is generally people are prepared to help others. So in a community, mm. whenever, mm. whenever there is an emergency, people will step forward. But the point is sometimes because you don't know that there are people who need support, there are people who need help because you've not connected enough with yeah. them. So it's not so much that Singaporeans don't care, mm -hmm. but I think they need to be, be more aware, given those opportunities. opportunities. Yeah. opportunities uh, yeah. but, but then I, I want to also caveat that we shouldn't make it transactional. Uh, sometimes it becomes very transactional, particularly when students are, are, are trained to, oh. are taught to, you know, let's go and do community service, right? Let's go to the old folks. But uh, uh, once you go and, and connect the elderly, have conversation, and when you come home, and you see an elderly sitting at the void deck. Do you Connect interact with or you, the elderly? Mm, because yeah. you just met someone at the old folks home which your school brought you there. Mm. Yeah, so it's curated. Yeah. 
But did it in you get inter, does it get mm. internalized such that when you see an elderly who is sitting on the void and you see the elderly every day five pm right. will sit there, why don't you go out and say Amo, uh, mm. uh, Ama, Ama, uh. you know where do you stay? Mm. Language you can easily mm. you know? yeah, so that's what I mean by transformation mm. from mm. from an experience that's curated to something that's natural, mm. and we need to work at it yeah. so that they internalize that process and and they grow up to feel that members of my community are as important yeah. as people who I meet in a more structured environment. Mm. I, I think we play. give each other um, mm. the respect of space, right? Mm. Okay, you know what? They need their privacy, they need the space, mm. but sometimes too much space, mm. it becomes nothing at all. Like you wanted to give them the privacy, but sometimes that's not what they need. Mm. They just want a form of, Human hello, connection. how yeah. are you? Human connection, I think, yeah. Yeah, we are afraid mm. to reconnect because of our own awkwardness. Mm. But we, you know, Nothing, so, nothing is being communicated. Co because connection is also about wanting to do it. Mm, mm. Volunteering your time mm. to connect with people. And what is the state of volunteerism right now in Singapore, Minister? Do you know? Like, how it, it's is quite it? High. Quite high, it's yeah. quite high. It's quite high. Though the, that includes the, the school's mm, way mm. of uh, values in action. Uh, but what we really want to see is when one volunteers on our own accord. Mm. Uh, after that structured environment. So usually when we do values in action, we say, okay, we, we start for you. We, we just give you the space. We give you the opportunity, but we hope that will then transform you to want to do more. Mm. And then that transformation is the one that's challenging. So we're also encouraging parents to also uh, start bringing their kids, not just the school does it, mm. but the parents also do it. So because when the parents model that behavior, then the kids will feel that, like, yes, there's something that, that mm. I want to learn too. And I want to also exemplify that kind of uh, behaviors that will, benefit mm. other people. Uh, I yeah. brought my daughter to volunteer to give out food to some families mm. in the rental place during fasting month. Mm. So I think that happens for around two weeks. And then the moment fasting month ended, she <coughs> came back and asked me, um, when are we going to deliver the food oh, to the families again? Okay. So I think the, it's, it's sad that some volunteerism is only like seasonal. Uh -huh. it, it should be done you know, on a regular basis. Like This is a six-year-old child mm. who only volunteered for like two weeks mm. and to a certain, like maybe we distributed to 30 families. Mm -hmm. And then she actually remembered, now it's not fasting month, now it's uh, high raya, yeah. now it's after high raya, who's giving yeah. the food Even to these should, families. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I think Minister oh. was right. Like if we parents, mm. we allow our children for this kind of opportunities, they would be the one that would ask for yes, more of absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. So maybe to wrap it up, um, I'm going to ask every one of us yeah. here, you know, the one final question about how much hope do you have for Singapore? Because a lot of this is just words at the moment. Mm. On the ground, mm. what's happening? Minister? I think you really need to, uh, to be a Singaporean, you mm -hmm. need to feel belong to this place that you are in. And you feel, and belongingness, belongingness is really about me owning this space, owning this process of building this uh, country. Um, and me as an individual has a role to play. Mm. Everyone has a role to play, caring for others, building up the community. Um, there's that much the government can do. We, we, we instituted this movement called SG Cares. Lots of opportunities for people to volunteer in. The question is, are you prepared to step forward? And mm. how much are you prepared to step forward? They always say, I don't have time. It's easy to donate money, mm. but yeah. it's very difficult to donate time or give your time, right? So I think if we, if we really talk about building a uh, uh, united Singapore, it's literally everyone first believing that you have a role to play. Mm. Two, internalizing that spirit of contributing to that process of building Singapore. Three, acknowledging that change is the only constant. <laughs> and we, uh, we must be prepared to change. Yeah. I always say Singapore is a works in progress. Mm. And that we yeah. will never, never stop um, reinventing ourselves. Yeah, and I think that's, that's important to, to, to remember because at the end of the day, all of us, as we get older, the next generation takes over, like you say. Yeah. So your children, mm -hmm. right? What hopes do you have for this country with them growing mm -hmm. up? Um, I believe Singaporeans have been a very caring community, but I think in future, we have to continue the care. Mm. You know, like the caring is not only to be done only when it's expected from us. I think fellow Singaporeans have a right over us to be cared for. So you don't, you don't care only for those with mental health, mm. care for those also who do not have symptoms mm. of mental health. It's like the care should not be done only when it's demanded or when it's needed. The mm. care should continue either way. Mm. 
So we have been, I think we should give ourselves a round of applause. We have mm. been very caring community of excellence, but the caring should continue. That's mm. that's my hope. Ben, what about you? Because you know, you've got your son, mm. <laughs> he's growing up, he's a world champion athlete and he's oh, going to be here. I have high hopes. Okay, uh, mm. I'm very optimistic about the people that come after us. Mm. Um, and uh, I think a lot more reason to be optimistic about the future than when we, you know, when we were at that age, mm. I think. I mean, just look at you, Liana. You, you look at where you are right now with your organization <laughs> and all that. Aww. That's fantastic. Uh, it's a true leader in of your generation, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so all good for the next 50 years. Well, yeah, I'm hoping. Hopeful, yeah, hopeful. we're hopeful. We're hopeful. hopeful. That's good. Hopeful that we will be able to cement our Singaporean identity. You know, it's been wonderful speaking with uh, the three of Thank my you. guests, Benjamin Lee, Liana, as well as Minister Maliki. Thank you so much for spending time with us and chatting about this very, very important issue of uniting Singapore um, at the forward SG exercise under the pillar of Unite. So if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, you can always click on the link below and leave it there and we'll try and answer them as much as we can. If you want to catch up on all the other episodes of Red Dot Hot Takes, well, it's here on the Reach Singapore YouTube channel. I'm Hosea Leung. We'll see you in the next episode.